Well, we're here at uh, Carey Furnaces in the uh, blowing engine house. The, uh, the cranes and the trucks and the riggers have just pulled out and uh, for the uh, first time since 1991, here's the 48-inch universal plate mill all in almost one piece. We still have probably a couple hundred tons of parts to put on, but at least all the big parts are here. This is the 50 inch bore by 60 inch stroke Macintosh Hemp Hill two cylinder reversing engine. Uh, this mill and engine were built in 1899 for the uh, Carnegie Steel Homestead Works and uh, operated until I believe 1979. So where we're at now, these, these two items in front of us are uh, distance pieces. They actually get picked up and spun around and set in between. Um, we're going to do that later because we have one of these sets of bed plates. We have to move around a little bit to get into position. Here's uh, some of the shrink links. I think there's 27 of these uh, shrink links to put in to tie the two bed plates together. And uh, Piston valves, a little bit unusual how the, uh, the, the, the valve rod is uh, not concentric with the bores. Out. And we get over here to the, uh, to the rolling mill itself. First we start out here, this, is, uh, this section here is called a pinion stand. Uh, the uh, the power from the engine coming off the crankshaft uh, one shaft would come over into the pinion stand there'd be a set of gears and basically you'd have two output shafts coming off and because this is a universal mill you'd also have two additional um, drive shafts that would come off to run the vertical rolls and those would be uh, up above there and those parts the bearings for that are not on yet. So as we walk down over here, now this uh, this casting here, I don't know if you can tell, but right over there it was fractured. Uh, we got it together pretty good, um, and it was fractured when it was in service. So I don't know how long it ran like that, but it was quite a while. Um, what we ha how this thing is uh, set up, it look, kind of looks like railroad tracks. Back here, that cross tie is called a sole plate. And uh, with three of those, those would be embedded into concrete. The rails are called mill shoes. And then each one of these um, are called uh, housings. And as we walk over here to the main uh, mill stand, again, you can see the, uh, the two sole plates and then the mill shoes and the uh, the actual rolling mill housings here and uh, now you can see see this little recess there's two recesses there those that's where the uh, the vertical rolls would fit in there and then there's cross ties that go back and forth between the two stands that fit into here um, and uh, you know, so you have your two horizontal rolls and then you have the four vertical rolls all working on the plate. Now, about right where, right where the camera is at now is about the level of the top of the rollers. Um, so it's good six feet off the ground, you know, just to get up to the level where the, uh, the plate would, would move in and out. And that's largely because, you know, instead of all this sitting it down into the floor, it's actually sitting on top of the floor here. So. You know, one little concession to make because we didn't want to dig the floor out and put in a, you know, a real foundation. So, but we can make do with the way it's set up. You know, all those various holes, there's shafts and screws and all sorts of other things going into there. And that's mainly what we're going to be doing over the next however many years is you know, reassembling all this, cleaning it up. Refurbishing it, you can see a lot of uh, studs there, especially up there. You can see them, they're burned off. So you got to go in there, heat them up, pull them out, put new, have new studs made up, bolt whatever it is that goes there in place. Um, 
the uh, the big bolts to hold down the uh, side frames they need to be cleaned up the threads chased new nuts made installed um, now what sits here on, on here and there that's the beginning of the uh, the roller table and um, let's see and the roller those two roller tables are sitting back over in here uh, so you have this uh, this one and the one over there they go on each side up against the mill and they lock into place and then these roller tables are, are attached to that and then you have the various rollers that go all the way back I think we've got um, 20 10 on each side and then the plate would roll back and forth on on these and then go you know to the, to the rolls uh, this item here is the um, reverse gear for the engine it's a, just a very large power reverse like hydraulically operated okay and this is the uh, the main steam inlet uh, this would stick out the front of the engine your main steam line coming in and then there's one for one cylinder and then there, here's one for the other side this is the uh, this is one of the distance pieces this is actually what the uh, the power reverse gear sits on and these two ties go on the uh, top of the pinion stand and the shafts for the uh, um, vertical roll drives go through the the bearings there and let's see let's go over here take a look at the crossheads these are the sets of crossheads for the engine um, as you can tell we've we've had to cut the uh, piston rods off didn't want to do that but um, that joint was not coming out in any way shape or form I mean we worked on it half a day we had a hundred hundred ton hydraulic cylinder in there beating on it and you know it just would not come loose so cutting this off is not going to harm us very much um, one of the things we plan to do is to make the engine operate electrically with a hidden electric motor to make it turn over so these shafts would just slide in and out of the uh, the bore and we don't need the pistons to do that okay and over here is a uh, um, this is the manipulator for the for the slabs so the slab to come in, you could flip it up on edge or flip it over or whatever you want to do with the with the manipulator here, which is a you know nice nice piece to have with this mill. Okay, so we'll walk around the back side, and as you can see, there's just all sorts of grease and grime and brick and rust and everything here. That you could possibly imagine what you have to clean up and, and deal with okay and coming to the to the uh, well what's what's traditionally known as the front of the engine most people would think the cylinder end is the front but in steam engine parlance the uh, the crank end is usually the front end um, and over here looking at the uh, crankshaft the one of the things about this crankshaft is uh, if you can see there just how badly scored uh, some of the uh, the main bearings are that one's by far the worst this one here is just kind of bellied out a little bit not too much on the scoring and uh, over here it's a little of both got some scoring also kind of wallowed out uh, this here is not a flywheel per se this is more of a balancing wheel um, as you can as you can see there's no counterbalances on the on the crank itself they did that in this wheel which was um, something only Macintosh Hemphill did okay now let's let's go up on the bed plates here okay let's see we have uh, this is um, one of the crank pits and that's full of grease and leaves and dirt and whatever whatever you can imagine so let's see here yeah when we put this together we've got these uh, four bolts that we put in and there's three shrink links there and then there's two on the top 
the cross heads fit into here and then we're looking into the uh, um, the cylinder head and then looking over at the the other side this engine is, is real nice from a uh, installer standpoint because you know with these with these three distance pieces that go in there bolt together I mean there's really no way of installing this so it's not perfectly aligned uh, one problem I'm having with the taut engine is that you know the, the cylinder end is on the one side is, is like an inch and a half out of alignment and so I've got to jack it up and move it over and then have someone come in with a laser and make sure everything's perfectly aligned this year it's impossible to put it together without it being aligned so that that is a nice feature and these were that was done usually on these reversing engines because the forces involved with a reversing engine are much different than one that runs continuously one speed okay and we're looking over at the other side basically a carbon copy other than that side has uh, two main bearings and then this side here just has the one and an overhanging crank and can come here and take a look through the boards you can see that we did get it pretty close I mean within an inch or two in either direction uh, we can jack jack things up put them on skates move them around nudge them around a little bit whatever we need to do in order to get the the mill align perfectly with the engine. I think we're off a little bit, but it won't be too bad. I think we can get that taken care of. Um, you know, it, 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 it's real nice that uh, of the two rolling mill engines preserved, that, um, you know, that they're different in their construction and use, this being a reversing engine and the Todd being a non-reversing cordless engine. So you can see the differences in the uh, in the valve gear and type of construction. One has a flywheel, one doesn't. Um, and also being built by two different builders, you can see the, the differences in, in the construction techniques between the two companies. Uh, you know, William Todd and, and Macintosh Hemphill. So, you know, this is this is a great project. Um, I'm excited about it. I'm excited that you know the, the only two rolling mill engines left except for the the big one over at Weirton Steel which hopefully somebody comes up with some major money we'll go save that one too but of the of the two that are preserved and I'm working on both of them and uh, um, you know I think we're gonna we're gonna have two very good uh, exhibits here when we're done so well this Rick Rowland signing off and uh, um, see you later